what is up everybody almost evil 33 is here again and today i got another battlefield 3 gameplay commentary for you guys this is a really special one uh first of all the gameplay this is probably some of the best craziest most intense gameplay that i've ever gotten on battlefield 3 um it was absolutely insane like the way that this game played and it ended it was so intense probably one of the most intense and toughest matches that i've ever played in Battlefield 3 and I recorded the whole thing unfortunately it was a little bit too large to throw into one video so I have the conclusion of this game that will be used for a separate video and I had to cut a couple pieces out uh, here and there just to make the time not you know ridiculous because the whole match itself was like almost half an hour which was extremely long but it was a very enjoyable match and I had a lot of fun talking to my squad mates who uh, are actually my friends over Xbox and uh, we had a good time, so hopefully you guys enjoy the match. But anyway, as you can see in the title, I wanted to talk today about why I PTFO all the time in Battlefield 3 and why I think that you should if you already don't. And it's a really interesting topic because I get a lot of questions about this all the time, whether it be in my YouTube inbox or my real-life friends asking me or anybody who watches my gameplay and I talk to them on Xbox, whatever. I get questions, why do you PTFO all the time, evil? You know, sometimes, you know, wouldn't you think it's more beneficent to get a lot of kills? Wouldn't that make better gameplay? And I never really know how to answer their question in a brief way. So I'm going to take the time in this video to explain why I PTFO and why you should if you already don't. So the way I'm going to start off explaining this is in a really simple, easy to understand, advantages and disadvantages format. You guys know, like a compare and contrast kind of thing. So... I'm going to talk about the advantages and disadvantages of PTFOing, and I think you guys will be pretty damn interested to hear what I have to say here, because I think from my knowledge of playing Battlefield 3 and talking to other people such as Captain Obvious and others that are even better than me at this game that we've, you know, figured out that PTFOing is the way to go. So hear me out in this one. I'm going to keep it as entertaining and to the point as I possibly can. So here we go. So, I'm going to start off with the advantages to your individual player skill. Now, when I say individual player skill, what do I mean? Well, I mean, how many kills did you get? How many deaths did you get? Um, did you get a lot of points? Did you get a lot of weapon unlocks? Things of that nature. Uh, because, in my opinion, in having a good time on Battlefield 3 requires you to have fun on an individual level, which is consisting of the things that I just explained, and on a team level. Did your team play well? Did your team get stomped by the enemy, or did you guys, you know, uh, end up winning the game, and was your squad any good? Things like that. So let's start with the individual level. So I'm going to start off with the disadvantages and get that out of the way as fast as I can, because the advantages really outnumber the disadvantages for PTFOing. Now, the disadvantages of PTFOing in terms of your individual player skill. You might suffer a lot of deaths. There's really no way around that. I think death is inevitable if you play the objective because there's obviously going to be enemies swarming it a lot of the time. But, um, you know, I will say this. For every death, you'll probably get a lot of kills if you're good with the gun. But yeah, you're going to get a lot of deaths. I'm not going to lie. You know, you might get a lot more kills, but you will end up with a decent number of deaths. Maybe more than you would like. But that's just how it goes because, you know, you're fighting hard for the objective and you're going to die. And, I mean, it's it's just, you know, something that you're going to have to deal with. And the more you practice, the less deaths you'll get. So, death is inevitable. That's probably the one disadvantage I could think of for individual player skill. Now, moving on to the numerous advantages. The first advantage, points. You get a ridiculous amount of points for PTFOing in Battlefield 3. So, think of it this way. For every kill, you get 100 points. So, if you sit back and snipe or you sit back and, uh, you know, put a bipod on an LMG and sit in your spawn trying to pick off people, and every minute or so you get a kill. That's 100 points, or maybe 110 or something. Congratulations. If you're on the front line killing a bunch of people and arming objectives, you will get a lot more points than that, I'll tell you that right now. And also, don't forget how many points you get for arming objectives or capturing flags. Arming an MCOM alone, without even blowing it up, gives you 100 points. That's as much as one kill. Now, getting the MCOM destroyed, altogether, you get 600 points. That is a lot of points. That's worth six kills just for blowing up one MCOM. And if you're good at BTFOing and you work hard, you could probably light up maybe four MCOMs a game, maybe three. 
that's a lot of points. Even if you just do three, that's 1,800 points right there. And that's not including any kills that you get, which is going to be a lot. So in terms of points, PTFOing is absolutely phenomenal. You know, there's no disadvantages to it in terms of points and how many points you'll get. Now, in terms of kills, you'll get a ton of kills. If you know how to use your gun, and you know your gun's disadvantages and advantages, and if you don't, well, I highly suggest you check out Captain Obvious's uh, Armory series on YouTube, because he goes in-depth on the weapons. I was thinking of doing something like that, but, uh, I mean, he pretty much beat me to it, but he's just so damn good at uh, series like that. He's all about statistics and whatnot, so check out that series if you're interested in weapons. But, like to, uh, back to what I was saying. Uh, so... If you know your gun, and you know the disadvantages and advantages, and you know you know that your weapon is good for the combat situation that you're in, you can get a lot of kills. And when I say a lot, I mean a lot. I come out with, you know, sometimes 39, 40 kills, uh, 20 on a bad day, and that's a lot of kills. Um, you can get as many as 50, and it all depends on the map, game mode, things like that. In this game, I think I ended up coming out with about 40. And that's Conquest, so that's a good amount of kills for a Send Rush, uh, or Send, Send Rush, Send Cross Conquest game. Um, 40 kills is a good amount. But anyway, so you get a lot of kills, you get a ton of points, you may get some deaths. And uh, I'll tell you what, you'll get a lot of weapon unlocks too. Now, well, weapon unlocks. Look at it this way. Like I said before, if you sit back with an LMG or a uh, assault rifle with a bipod on it and you like to sit in the hills and pick off one or two people every couple minutes that's fine you might get maybe eight nine kills a game and you know you get like no deaths and you're like man look at me I'm flawless look how sexy I am well guess what you're really not all that sexy because you didn't unlock any attachments or anything probably didn't even rank up too far because you didn't get that many points but moving on to attachments you probably didn't unlock any attachments for your gun and meanwhile, the person who went, you know, uh, 42 and 27, they, they unlocked four different attachments for their gun. And they're just laughing in your face because you didn't unlock anything and you sat back like a bitch. So, PTFO, you'll get a lot of attachments too. So now we're going to move on to the team level and why you should PTFO and how it's going to benefit your team. Alright, so why should you PTFO on a team level or team play level? Well, that's pretty self-explanatory. Basically, if you don't PTFO or your squad or team doesn't PTFO, you're doomed to lose from the start. Because more likely than not, the other team is going to totally stomp you. Because they're going to have guys going for the objective. And I mean, that's a, it's a big problem, I think. A lot of people feel like they're the only ones playing the objective on their team. And they're like, oh, well, if nobody else is, then why should I? Because I'll tell you what, maybe you'll inspire other people to start playing the objective. Because I'll tell you, if you're in a squad full of snipers who aren't doing anything, more likely than not, whoever is joining that squad isn't going to PTFO because they're not going to want to spawn on a sniper and then run a mile up to the objective. No, they're just going to sit there and snipe or, you know, put a bipod on their LMG and just fire from the hills and not arm anything or disarm anything, whatever the case may be. So you need to take an initiative and start PTFOing. More importantly, though, if your team decides that they don't want to PTFO, they don't want to play the objective, they don't want to help you out at all, just leave. You're not being a bitch. Trust me. You're not. If anything, you're being a smarter player, and it's just going to be more enjoyable for you to be on a team that actually cares about winning. And uh, some Battlefield players do, some don't. So my suggestion to you, join a team that actually will play the objective and will help you out, and you can help them out. Because I'm sure they have a place for you. Uh, so definitely join a team that you're going to you know, have fun playing the game on and help them out. You know? know your role in the game. Don't sit there if you're a sniper and start running up towards the objective with a sniper rifle and try to arm it and you know, try to pick off defenders. That's not going to work. Okay. You need to know your role. You need to sit back. If you're a sniper, you need to kind of stay back a little bit, pick off enemy snipers, and more importantly... Please spot enemies, because any enemy soldiers that you see, just spot them. Because, uh, you know, your buddies on the front line there that are trying to arm the objectives, they need help. They need to see where the enemy is, so it's one of your main responsibilities as a sniper to do that. And if you're an assault, you need to be reviving, throwing med kits, using smoke, um, using all the tools you have to your advantage. You need to use them to help out your team. 
and uh, knowing your role into what you know class you're in is really important. If you're support, you need to throw ammo. So many people beg for ammo, and the supports just ignore them. It's like, come on, man. If they're asking for ammo, give it to them. And, uh, I mean, engineer, repair tanks, destroy tanks, and uh, stay at close range. And I'm not going to try to go through a whole guide here explaining how to play the game, because that's not what this video is about. I just wanted to explain why PTFO and why you should. At an individual level and team play level, PTFOing dominates the battlefield, and you will win many games, and you'll have a lot of success in terms of your individual playing. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave me a thumbs up. And other than that, I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.